Amen. Good to hear Miss Nancy this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see each of you. And uh, glad to have each of you with us. Those that are not able to hear today but are listening on the World Wide Web, just give them a little description. Preacher's wearing a big orange shirt. <laughs> Looks like the great pumpkin. <laughs> so, that give them a visual anyway. It's good to see you this morning, and uh, we want to lift up any announcements we may have. Uh, Tom, you want to say a little bit about the reading deal for the Bible year long? Uh, we are working on a 365 day reading Bible of the year. We have a general outline, general concept that we're refining within the Sunday school class, uh, which we'll talk about more today. And we'll bring back to the whole congregation once we have a specific plan in place. But generally, the idea is that we will start the first of next year with how to read the Bible throughout the entire year. So beginning in 2019, uh, we'll start our project. And hopefully by the end of 2019, we will, as a whole congregation, uh, those who choose to participate, all volunteer will read the entire Bible in a year. We'd like to start with this congregation, invite Browns, and then expand it to other churches within the district and perhaps other churches within our community. So when we get the whole project put together, we'll bring it back to everybody. But that's just the general outline at this point. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Tom. Any other announcements or things we can lift up? It's good to have Ira back with us today. We've missed you so much. Good to have you. Glad to have you back. Next week will be uh, our second meeting today, so at right foot at 10.30, if anybody wants to come down. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? We had a good meeting uh, Thursday night, I guess it was. And uh, we, uh, if you wasn't here, we had nominated you for several things, so we just want you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way we work around here. You don't come, you get nominated. But I uh, appreciate everyone that's uh, agreed to be part of this church family and to do the things you do. Any other announcements? Okay, if not, let's uh, begin our service and our song of praise. Those who are able to stand, we invite you to do so. We turn to number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Let's remain standing. Let's join together in proclaiming our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our second hymn is Tis So Sweet, number 462. I invite you to join with us. Thank you. 
some special prayers too. Okay, anyone else? opportunities we have before us to worship you, to praise you, to honor you. We ask your God as we do this that we also lift up those concerns we have in our hearts. It's our time we have this conversation with you and we pray dear God that you would reach down and touch those who are suffering, be with those that are hurting, and be with those that have lost loved ones. Lord, may you fill their heart with the love that only you can give in the time of emptiness. We pray dear God for the sick and the afflicted. We pray for those who have Receive bad news, Lord. May you turn that bad news into good news. And Lord, we pray for this congregation. We pray for our nation, our leaders. We pray for decisions we all make in our lives. That Lord, we always focus our eye upon you. And now, Lord, as we pray together, Lord, we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And we uh, we missed Nancy's birthday last week, but we sang to her, right? Yes. Thank y'all very much for my gift. I appreciate y'all. Too sweet. Wasn't a squirrel tail, was it? No, it wasn't a squirrel tail. <laughs> Give me a pair of speedo pants, yeah. <laughs> but they gave me more than that. that was... We gave her a bikini. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Y'all are just too much. We invite the ushers coming out to see our morning offering. We won't be styling together, I promise you. <laughs> Father in heaven, we thank you for the many gifts that you bless us with. Now, Lord, we give back that portion, Lord, that's needed to do the work of the church. We thank you, dear God, for this congregation. We thank you, dear God, for the gift and the giver. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. <laughs>
may be seated. Today's reading comes from Hebrews 1, 1 through 4, and chapter 2, 5 through 12. Let us hear God's word together. God, who at sundry times and divers manners spake in the times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these days spoken to us by his Son, who hath appointed heir of all things, <clears throat> by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightest of his glory and expressed image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. And in chapter 2, verses 5 through 12, For unto angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man, that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man, that thou visit him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels, then crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not un put under him, but now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. For it became for whom all things, and by whom all things, in bringing many sons into glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he has sanctified, and that who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to be called them brethren. Saying, I will declare thy name to my brethren, in the midst of church will I sing praise unto thee. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Imagine being royalty and you had all these folks that were beneath you and one day you decided, you know what, I don't like what they're going through. I don't like what my people are facing, so I'm going to step down off of my throne and walk among them, be abused, be ridiculed, go through much suffering, and then I'm going to die for them. That's just unheard of to think about someone to do that. But that's what Jesus did. He, he stepped down from glory, became as us, he took on the body of the flesh, took all the suffering and pain that we would go through up on his own shoulders, and then went a little bit further and said, I will conquer death, and I will conquer suffering. I will overcome the grave so that you won't have to go through it. Have you ever seen your children go through something and you said, I wish I could just take your place, you know? I've said that a lot of times when, when Tapta was young and she was going through a lot of things. She was uh, having surgery on her, uh, on her tendons or on the right side where she was having trouble. And I said a lot of times, Lord, I wish I could just take her place, but, but it wasn't my place to take. And, and so I had to be, instead be a support for her and be there for her when she went through the things. And I want to tell you, sometimes when you watch your children suffer, it's a, it's a worse thing than you could take it upon yourself. And I think Jesus, for us, saw our suffering, saw our pain, saw the need to come down from glory and to die for us. Now, what bothers me today, and I hope it bothers you too, is that somehow in society, in this world we live, even though we, we know the suffering he went through, we know the pain he went through, we are not calling him Lord. And he is Lord. He is Lord of all. We have forgotten that we need to, to praise him and lift him up and to say his name and be elevated above all other names 
Instead, we find that the, in society and the world we live, there are a lot of other names thrown out there that people want to follow. Sometimes it's not even people. Sometimes it's just articles and possessions. Greed, power, things like that. And then I, I hear the other day from a colleague that said that he was uh, concerned that, that people had forgotten it. He said, no other way can one go into the Father except Jesus. And they have chosen other ways. He said, well, I, I'll do it by good works. I'll do it by serving another master. I'll do it by some other means, but I don't have to go through Jesus. But as we read the scripture, and I think that's why it's important, Tom, that we go through the scriptures and read them. He reminds us that there is no other way except through Jesus Christ. Wouldn't it be nice if all we had to do was write a check and get to heaven? Amen? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Uh, send in your monthly payment here today for $9.99. You'll get your, your ticket right on to heaven. It doesn't work that way. I tell the comical story. I've told this several times, but it said a, a preacher and a lawyer and a, and a, a deacon in the church, they all had uh, been entrusted with this man's money. He said when he left there, he wanted to take all his money with him. And so, sure enough, at the graveside, they were all asked to put the money in the side of the casket as they closed him, uh, closed it down and fixed the scene, uh, put him in the ground. They said the deacon went up and he, sure enough, had all his the money the guy had given him and he slipped it in the side of the casket. And the lawyer made sure he had all the right paperwork Make sure he had all the things signed that he did. He had witnesses to put the money in the side of the, the side of the casket. Of course, the preacher also wanted to keep a written record. He, instead of putting the money in, he wrote a check. Put that in the side of the casket. We preachers have ways, don't we? But you can't, you can't take it with you. Now, I had someone make a joke one time and said, well, you know, uh, you don't see a hearse pulling a U-Haul. Actually, I, we saw one one time. That was the strangest thing. Somebody had bought an old hearse and they had, was pulling a U-Haul with it. Now, that was, a, that was something unique to see. But our priority should be not about our stuff and about our things, and it's hard not to be nowadays. We all have things. But it should be about what our eternity will be. Have we chosen Jesus Christ as Lord? Have we let him be our priority in life? Or have we chosen another God, whether it be material or whether it be, maybe it might be another religion, might be another uh, follower. I mean, there are people who follow Buddha and they follow uh, uh, Harry Krishna and they've got um, uh, Muhammad and all kinds of different things. And, but but we, as we're reminded, it's, it's not that we're uh, trying to be, that we're better than anyone else, but Jesus is better than everyone else. Jesus is the priority. Jesus is the one here we're called upon today to realize all he's done for us and we should follow him for he is our Savior. almost lost that. It said, God who in sundry times and divers manners spake in the past to his fathers by prophets, he gave us this notice that he was coming. And very soon he would come into this world. And when he did, he took on our sins. And it says here, who being the brightest of his glory and expressed the image of the person of holding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged all sins. You know, we don't have to go in and before the Lord with half of sins. I mean, all of them can be purged. Wouldn't that be wonderful to start over? Uh, wouldn't you like to start over tomorrow? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Now, I don't want to start over age-wise. I don't want to go back and do some of that stuff again. But wouldn't it be nice to know what we know now? And uh, to be able to re conquer the things that we had before us. Not make the same mistakes. But you know, I think mistakes sometimes help us grow. Because, you know, any person that's ever succeeded, they've failed several times before they succeed. Nobody gets it right the first time. And so when we follow Jesus, he allows us to make our mistakes, yes. But he also steps in and he says, on your behalf, he said, you are forgiven. I am taking your place. He took him down and walked with us and said he made himself lower, uh, much better than the angels, but he was, just made himself lower than us. But he came down, for he hath the inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. It said the angels have not put in subjection the world to come, where we speak. But one in a certain place testified, what is man, that thou art mindful of him? 
or the Son of God, Son of Man, that thou visit him. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crowned him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that all subjection under his feet, he left nothing that is not put under him. There is nothing that is above Jesus now. There is nothing that is over him. For see, he has stepped into that place, and he has laid down his life for our sins. I also read to you there over in the other part of, of the scripture in Hebrews, it says, But we see Jesus was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. And that's what we don't have to take now because he took our place. Yes, we may take a physical death, but that spiritual death eternal, he has taken our place. Crown with glory and honor that he was by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Can you imagine taking on the pain of every person? That's what Jesus did. For it became him from whom all things, by whom all things, and bringing many sons to the glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. You know, all the sacrifices that were made before Jesus came were not enough. None of them was enough. Sacrifice of lambs, of sacrifice of goats, the first, uh, first uh, crops, all the things they brought before the altar were not enough. And so Jesus come and gave the perfect sacrifice. He is Lord. He is the Savior of all. For both he that sanctified and they were sanctified for all one, for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church, will I sing praise unto thee. We sing praises, don't we? We get excited about the fact that, that Jesus loved us so much, we sing about it. We share about it. We tell everyone we can how Jesus has done in our life. You know, I remember what it was like when I accepted Jesus into my heart. I just want to tell everybody, Jesus is Lord of my life now. He's, he's not just something that I talk about. He's not just someone that I've heard about, but he's somebody that I know. Amen. He's somebody that's part of my life. And I want to tell everybody, everybody and everywhere I go, it's kind of like name dropping, you know. You say, I know so-and-so, and I know so-and-so. Well, you know Jesus. And you can tell people that he is the Lord of my life. He is my Savior. He's my all in all. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the first and last. He is the one who came and took my place on the cross of Calvary. Years ago, there was a story about a little boy, and it was in a song, and I can't even find the song, but this little boy had gotten in trouble in school. And he and this uh, boy, was, uh, this bigger boy was sitting in the back, and this boy was a little bitty boy. I mean, little bitty. I mean, small boy. I don't know if y'all understand what little bitty is, but the small boy, I think y'all do. But a uh, small young boy, and, and he got in, uh, got in trouble. Uh, he had uh, took something that wasn't his uh, because he was hungry. He wanted some food, and he took something that wasn't his. And the teacher called him out. And this was back when they had one-room schools, and, and it's pretty more discipline on The teacher had more control back then. And the little boy was called up the front, and he had a, they went and got a switch, you know. I always said I don't know how there was ever any pear trees or apple trees left in the world because of all the switches they used to cut off of. But he bring that switch tree or that, that peach limb in or whatever it was, and he was going to take a whipping for his, for his uh, crimes. And in the back there was this bigger boy, and he cried out to the teacher, he said, don't whip him. He said, why? He said, I'm going to take his whipping for him. And the big boy went down the front. And the little boy who was crying because he, he knew it was going to hurt so bad, the little boy did. He said, why do you want to take my place? He said, I can take this pain and punishment better than you can. And so he took the punishment for that little boy. That's what God did for us. He knew he could take the pain and the punishment and the suffering much better than us. And so he took our place. And that's why we call him Lord. He is Lord. He is Savior. He is our all in all. And because he loved you, he came and took your place. Today we're going to come before the table where we find out that that before us is because he took our place. He laid down his life. On that night when he was with his disciples, he took the bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat of it. And on that same night, he lifted up the cup and he said, this is my blood which is shed for you. Eat and drink. And as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And so let us pray now. 
Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for reminding us that, Lord, we uh, have an awesome, loving Savior who took our place on the cross of Calvary. Forgive us now for all of our sins. Lord, let us be with a cleansed heart, come before this table. Let us not have anything against our brothers or sisters. And Lord, let us be ready to serve you and to fill ourselves with your goodness. Lord, let us realize today that you are Lord in our lives. And Lord, as we pray this, we pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And amen. I'm going to ask those going to help this morning to come. I invite you to come. Remind you that we all are welcome to the table of the Lord. He's invited us. He took our place. And now he invites you to come. And remember, his gift to you. He invites you to come. also your invitation if you need to rededicate your life if you'd like to establish that Jesus is Lord in your life we invite you to come would you stand
be it Wednesday, right? That's our 1030 and right. Don't forget that. And uh, we uh, thank each of you for being here this morning. Pray for one another, lift one another up, and also lift your preacher up always when you need your prayers. Now that's the city of benediction. Gracious God, we thank you for our time together. We thank you, dear God, for our Sunday school that we'll share in this moment. We thank you for every person that's here. Now, Lord, forgive us as we sin or as we do wrong. Lord, let us lift you up and praise you as our Lord and our Savior. And, Lord, know that we have been redeemed because of you. And we thank you in the precious and holy name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.